If you've been in class or seminars with me before, you'll know I like ending up by asking what difference you can make. So here's an example of one way in which you can make a difference to your clients' lives. And in particular, on how you might intentionally promote their sexual health and well-being. Let's just take a quick view of one of the key elements of the NMC's Code of Professional Standards. And that section is right at the very beginning, where you're encouraged to prioritise the clients that you care for. Don't just look at these words in green, but look back at your code and see this whole section that follows on from this. What I'm asking you to do is to read each line of this or each sentence and think of it in relation to promoting sexual health and well-being for your specific client populations. And once you've put the client at the heart of your care, prioritising people, what we need to do next is to get explicit in the way in which we can deal with matters of sexual concern. Back in the 1970s, an American sexologist, J. A. N. On, designed a model for psychosexual care with his clients, and he referred to it as the PLICIT model. It stood for permission giving, limited, limited information, making specific suggestions, and then referring on to others if intensive therapy was needed. The model was adapted and taken further in 2006 by Taylor and Davis when they rebranded it as the Extended Plicit or the Explicit model. And I've actually written on it myself and made some video presentations that you can see links to here. Rather than seeing plicit as a linear process whereby you give permission, then limited information, then make specific suggestions and then refer on to others, what J.A. Anon called intensive therapy, Taylor and Davis put the plicit model right at the heart of this particular circle. And you can notice that they talk about reflecting and reviewing how your sessions are going at every stage. So rather than just using permission um, giving or taking right at the very beginning, you keep referring to it at all stages, especially as you're going on to other aspects of promoting sexual health with your clients. Giving people permission to talk about things which they may consider to be sensitive or delicate or particular matters of sex, sexualities or sexual health may be actually giving a really good green light to them to talk about this. So often clients feel really nervous or embarrassed to bring up certain issues. So the very fact that you're being proactive in saying you are prepared to talk about um, these issues is going to be really good for them. So let's now turn the focus around to you. Try to consider for one moment your professional or clinical work and try to identify at least one key or critical issue regarding the ways in which you can promote sexual health with your clients that you actually feel comfortable in talking about or working with. Ask yourselves how much knowledge or information you have on that particular issue that you feel comfortable in talking about, or have you got really good skills in being able to work with clients in, um, in a therapeutic way to talk about particular aspects of their sexual health and well-being. It's not just a case of giving people limited information, such as handing them leaflets or brochures about particular services um, that they may need in relation to their sexual health and well-being. You might actually have to make specific suggestions. That could be in helping them to find specific services that will help them, or even helping them to make um, appointments to go to such services. J. A. Anon used the term intensive therapy because he was a practicing psychologist and therefore he meant that um, individual counsellors may be referring others on for more in-depth counselling by other people. Um, whereas when we're applying it right across health now, it's not just a case of intensive therapy, it just means simply referring people on when you realise that you've reached the limits of your expertise. And finally, where the extended plicit or the explicit model of Taylor and Davis differs from the original plicit by J.A. Anon, 
is that Taylor and Dave has not only put it into this circular effect, but they've added these words on the outside, which are focused not on the client, but on you as the practitioner. And this is what they're encouraging you to do, to be self-aware. So say, for example, if you're dealing with issues around sexual health with clients, and maybe you find something difficult to talk about, then be aware of that. And that means that you need to be reflecting both during practice, so in practice, and on practice. Also, look back and review how well you think the encounter with the client went, and whether there are things you can improve on. And then each and every encounter with clients in talking about sexual health or promoting their sexual health may reveal that your uh, levels of your knowledge go so far, but maybe now you need more. So it's a great opportunity for you to consider ways in which you may enhance and develop your own knowledge. And finally, they talk about challenging assumptions. This could be both in your clients and in yourself. With any aspect of life that people find um, sensitive or difficult to talk about, they may actually make some assumptions. And you can imagine them now just saying to you, oh nurse, look, I can't tell you this. You'll think I'm really dreadful. Anything like that, whereby they're a bit um, hesitant to talk about sensitive issues in life because they think maybe they're going to be judged by others. So challenge those assumptions and certainly reassure them and think of your code. I hope this brief overview of the explicit model has helped you to consider the ways in which you can actually go and make a difference now with your clients in promoting their sexual health and their well-being.